All right, more on stressed out tarp. Now, we got our Fed and FDIC graybeards here. These guys actually know what they're talking about. Here now is Bill Isaac, former FDIC chairman, CNBC contributor Bob McTeer, former Dallas Federal Reserve Bank president. You inspected and examined and supervised banks in the Dallas area. And Bill Isaac, you are the big mucker for the whole nationwide FDI system. You got to explain this to me, OK? Bill Isaac, I'm going to start with you. I see this as a political exercise to control banks and the economy. I'm sorry. That's where I come out. Tell me why I'm wrong. I don't know that I could argue with that, Larry. It, it makes no sense to have announced this stress test publicly. Uh, we've been doing stress tests in banks. Uh, the regulators have for decades. Uh, every bank that applied for the TARP capital had to go through a viability test by its primary regulator. And, and every bank of any, uh, you know, the larger banks all have stress tests as part of their regular risk management operation. So why they decided to announce that they were going to do a stress test, I don't know. Why right. they're going right. to right. announce the results publicly. Right. Why not? I, I don't I mean, know. Why not last? Uh, why not in February? Why not last um, October, November, December? All right, Bob McTeer. I don't know. Maybe you disagree with uh, this particular line of reasoning, but I'll ask you. I find the timing of this most curious, and I think this is going to be not only backdoor nationalization and firing whoever, Victor Pandit, they may go after Ken Lewis, who has already had a gun to his head by Mr. Henry Paulson, but also uh, more TARP money, more political control of the banking system. Go ahead, Bob. Tell me why I'm wrong. You examined banks down there in Dallas. It Larry, when, when they announced this, uh, I thought it was foolish, and I had the idea that it was a distraction because we were all waiting on Geithner to come up with, with his plan for TARP too. and I, I thought of this as a bone they were throwing us so we could gnaw on it for a while and forget about uh, TARP too. They obviously never considered their end game. How in the world could this thing come to a conclusion and have anything but bad come out of it? It was, it was just a terrible decision. I agree with Bill. Uh, they already knew everything they needed to know. I'm not sure I'm, I'm willing to, to become a conspiracy theorist and say this is all done to take over the banking system. I don't think they really want to take over the banking system. No, just large parts of it. But it was a it. terrible mistake. Just large chunks of it. Not all of it. You don't have to take over all of it. You can nail some big guys. Um, Bob McTeer, when you, were, when you were running the Dallas Fed, you ran it for, what, 10, 12 years? You were there quite a while. How long did you run it? Well, it was 14, 14, but I came in toward the end of the banking crisis. All right. Let me just ask you this. When you conducted normal uh, bank supervision, examination and regulatory uh, operations in the Dallas Federal Reserve uh, District down there in the southwest, uh, did you consult with the Treasury before you dealt with these banks? Did you let the Treasury know what you were doing? Did you inform them of the results? Treasury involvement is, uh, is entirely new and, and unfortunate, and they need to break away from that as soon as possible. Ah, that's really where I'm going You know, you've really got your FDIC and your, you've got the FDIC and the controller, and then the Fed has the uh, bank holding companies. That's plenty. They don't, need, they don't need an arm of government in here. So, Bill Isaac, I'm going to ask you the same question. You ran the FDIC, arguably the most powerful uh, bank regulatory arm. You guys close down banks. You know how to do it. You know how to examine. When you were running that thing, did you touch this? Let me see. Let me go back. Don Regan was the Treasury Secretary. I was working for Reagan in those days. Did you consult with Treasury regularly on your uh, individual bank examinations? Never. Uh, in fact, we would have been prohibited from disclosing the, the So what the of, hell are we doing that now for? What are we doing that now for? That's my <laughs> simple question. Why? I want to know why. I, I, I can't explain it, Larry. I, I, do think, I do think that it was probably well-intentioned. I think that when they first came up with this idea, whoever came up with it, I think they believed that if they did a stress test and, and said publicly they were doing a stress test, that somehow that would make people feel better. Uh, and and I, I agree with Bob. They did not consider the, the end game. It is really time to get Treasury and the White House out of the regulation of banks. It's highly dangerous. Banks should be regulated and supervised by the independent banking agencies uh, the way Congress intended, not, not by the Treasury and not by the White House. Now, let me ask you as a follow-up, what happens uh, May 4th? They are supposedly going to announce the individual bank stress test results, May 4th. That's what we're told. I don't know. Who knows? But that's what's in the newspaper. Now, how's that going to work? If the, the ones that are 
that fail or the ones that come close to failing or the ones that get, you know, a D minus, okay, versus the ones that get A minuses and B pluses. And there are good and bad banks out there. We all know that. That's the nature of our banking system. How, how is this going to work? I don't understand. <laughs> Do you well, want to take care of that? It can't do any good because <laughs> deposit insurance is a great leveler. That's what we all should be interested in. They're all, they're all insured, and we, we don't really need to know, you know, which of the equals are more equal than others. It can only do harm. So why do you think they're doing this, Bob McTeer? I want to ask Bill Isaac the same thing. You have both had a lot of regulatory experience. And now you're telling me, A, you just got through telling me you didn't consult with the Treasury when you ran your examination and supervision uh, responsibilities. And now you're telling me we shouldn't be singling out and publicizing digital banks. But the Treasury is deeply involved, and they are going to announce it. I don't understand. Why? I, th I think everybody's worshiping at the altar of transparency. I think that's become the new, uh, the new God, and it's being overdone. Uh, Bill Isaac? I, I think they got themselves into a box. They said they're going to do the stress test, and then they didn't think about what are you going to do when you're done with the stress test now that you've announced it. And so I, I'm hoping that on May 4 they don't come out with a lot of detail, that they, that they simply make some general statements about the, the condition of the banks, that they pass under, under the most likely scenario. If you get to a much worse case, you might, have, you might have a couple banks that are going to need a little more capital. The government will take care of that if it, if it needs to or if the private sector can't do it. And then that would be the end of the discussion. If they get into much more detail than that, uh, they're going to really, I think, hurt the system a lot. And, and the, those banks that... Um, go well, ahead. Yeah, no, hurt the system a lot. I mean, this is where this is going. You're politicizing an old and venerable regulatory process. And I frankly don't like it one bit. By the way, as a young pup, I was the uh, uh, executive assistant, the secretary, to one Mr. Frederick Shadrach at the New York Fed, who was in charge of uh, bank supervision and regulation. So I actually learned a little bit about this 35 some odd years ago. Let me ask a couple more questions before I let you go, fellas. You've been very good. Bob McTeer, um, how optimistic or pessimistic you are in banks? It is my contention with low zero interest rates and an upward curve and rising net profit margins, um, banks can grow their way out of this. Is that possible or am I just being too Pollyannish like usual? <laughs> That's the first time you've said, uh, not said, even bankers can do that. Oh, well, even bankers uh, can make money in an upward sloping <laughs> yield curve. I, I, was, I, was very, I was very pleased at the uh, financial results, but you know, uh, banks are earning some money on some of their products, but capital is still being eaten away. It's like, it's like somebody who's uh, feeling fairly healthy but has cancer. And as long as the, as the securities and the loans that are already on the books and have been there two or three years are, are wiping out capital, um, it's an illusion that they're doing much better. All right, so it's an illusion. Are you as pessimistic, Bill Isaac? No, I'm optimistic uh, that the, 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 the rates are so low, the cost of funding is so low. Uh, I really think the banks uh, have the ability to earn their way out of this if we can get the government out of the way and if we can get FASB to stop the, the mark to market of, and destruction of capital. They, we, we fixed about half of it with FASB, but they really didn't do what they need to do. And we got to fight that battle again. All right, so more work on mark to market. Bob McTeer, if you're rather pessimistic, you was right then, in effect, the Treasury is right, at least to some extent. They will have to go to the government for more TARP capital, and that means that they will be nationalized. That's where it's going to end up. Well, I'd rather they do continue to do preferred stock. Right. Now, can we just do this one quickie? I'm sorry, I'm running out of time. What's wrong with preferred stock? Why does the stock have to be so-called equity common? Why can't preferred? It's all the same capital boat, for heaven's sakes. It's just that the equity gives the Treasury Department the uh, ownership and the voting rights to run the bank. Why can't you just use the preferred and keep on doing that? Well, I would. Why I think not? the counter argument would be that the banks have to pay interest on the preferred. All right, Bill Isaac, last word. Well, I, th I think that we should stick with the preferred for the time being. 
uh, and, and we've gotten ourselves into a box with respect to tangible equity that the markets are looking to. I think we ought to ignore that for right now. Banks, banks uh, are following the Basel capital rules and they should continue to follow them. I don't think the public understands any of this. I think public either thinks the think banks so. are in horrible trouble or the public thinks the Treasury is being duplicitous and highly political with the White House. I see it as lose-lose. I think it's been mismanaged, gentlemen, very badly. And I'm sorry that that's the way out. Bill Isaac, thank you. Former FDIC head Bob McTeer, thank you. Former Dallas Fed head.